We keep trying to clear the decks on all of these gambling scandals, but a new one pops up seemingly every week. We'll we'll discuss that today. We got one in the NBA streets. This time involves some prop betting lines. We got MLB opening day, and we'll see what else Brian and I can cook up on today's lulls. Let's do it. Does he think... I it's think he thinks goat. this he thinks this is a go. Vegas Dave thinks this is a go. Hot naked girls doing yoga. What? Why don't you just win like a man? Random.org. <laughs> Type in one for yes, two for no, and let the DFS gods pick for you. And I'm absolutely begging you not to do bus. <laughs> Please. Please don't do bus. All right. Time for lulls. Thursday afternoon. You know, we I think what what happened, Brian, is we on this show we asked for like DFS drama and scandals, and I think the the gods just kind of misinterpreted us, and they keep giving us real, you know, NFL or, or real professional athlete gambling scandals. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the the Jags one again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that one was nuts. Who is uh, in charge of human resources over? Uh... In Jacksonville, someone might, you know, they might need a replacement there. Seriously. Uh, yeah, that one, what was it? Convicted sex offender who hacked Jumbotron at the Jacksonville Jacks. No, that's another one. No, that's it. No, I'm just shaking yeah, my yeah, head. That one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, is there another one that I didn't hear about? <laughs> um, yeah, he got uh, 220 years, which is about 200 more years than SBF got. That was right. another, uh, big news today. Right. Yeah. What's a few, you know, a few billion when you're messing with a jumbotron yeah the uh the sbf sentence came out i think just like a couple hours ago uh what was the initial uh expectation for that because like you said it was much much larger than people uh, or yeah what all that i don't know the technical terms but i thought the expectation was uh his whole life uh yeah. out out in an old man type of thing right which which I'm a, I know uh, Davis doesn't agree with me, but I'm against, you know, like, I think you should put the guy to work, you know, like he clearly can, you know, hold a job. He's no danger to society, society physically. And we're paying for this guy's next 25 years at, uh, you know, 150 K a year or whatever it is in California. If that's where he is, you know, 200 K a year. Like just like have him sit in his house and and just ninety percent of everything he makes or whatever goes back to paying people. I think they. I I half expect like knowing how well everything breaks for SBF. Uh, I half expect to read this article and, and they're going to make him uh, upon release uh, two hundred and fifty dollar monthly payments back to all FTX customers. Uh, for the rest least, of his life. At least with SBF, you have a realistic chance of getting some money back. You know, unlike the 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 DFS bro. Yeah. Uh, so like, you know, and then if he does something else, yeah, then throw him in in federal pound me in the ass prison. I think I think there's like minimums too in federal prison of how long he's got to serve. Yeah. And, and it does high. say here, Judge Lewis Kaplan's sentence was shorter than the 40 to 50 years requested by the prosecutors, which he said was more than necessary, but longer than the six and a half years that Bankman Freed's lawyers asked for. And the maximum sentence was 110. Six and a half. Wow. That would have been nice if he, for him, if he could have pulled that off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, is, it is crazy to think, like, again, uh, it, it sounds like 25 is light, you know, relative to what he did. But like within the crypto space, you know, 25 years, man, that that might as well be like a different century uh, oh, by the God. time he emerges, like what the landscape is going to look like then. Yeah, I still I don't I don't get it. Like, is this like, oh, now everyone like we feel better that he's, you know, that he that he feels really bad or like that, he, you know, he's threatened physically. I, I, I mean, and and then, you know, they'll be like, you know, because it'll dissuade other SBFs. It's like, come on, like, they're not going to dissuade these guys. They're going right. to keep doing it. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it's a burden to society. You know, like this guy's just now he's a double burden. And yeah. No one's going to get shit back. I mean, maybe keep him in jail, but then make him work, you know, <laughs> like come up right. with something to pay back. You know, whatever, whatever the hell he, if he's a coder, you know, code. 
What do you think? Uh, it reminds me of, you know, reading the the Billy Walsh book and he talked about, you know, he ended up having a prison job uh, there too. And I think he was helping with the laundry setup, you know, folding inmates laundry, filing it, organizing it. Um, what, what do you think SBF's uh, prison job is going to be in his uh, white collar prison? Uh, shower boy. <laughs> I think, I think everyone fills that role uh, there. I, it would be funny though, if they're like, okay, SBF, here's this computer. Um, we got you a rig to mine Bitcoin. Um, just, just spin this up and, uh, we'll see what you end up with in 25 years. <laughs> it's like, it's like one of those moonshine, you know, like, uh, how they, they can make alcohol in there. But so it's like powered by solar, you know, made, made with toilet, toilet, uh, yeah. Toilet parts somehow mine, mine Bitcoin. Uh, he's going to have to, uh, I follow, uh, Martin, Ciprelli, you know, the, uh, the, the, the pharma bro guy, he's, yeah, yeah. he's out of jail. And so he's got, he like called this all from the start, like how much time he's going to serve and what's his defense and all this type of stuff. And well, from, 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 from some personal experience on how from, these things go. <laughs> from Exactly. Personal experience. And, um, you know, those type of people, they like, they really get into stuff. So like he knew all the laws and stuff and, uh, it was pretty interesting. Um, and he's, he's actually pretty funny. But uh, yeah, he he's like whenever there's a picture of S SBF released from prison, he's like that body language is not good. Like he's not gonna be able. He, he's got to act tough. And he tells him like you got to learn the rap lyrics to these songs and like all these all these tips on how how to survive there. I mean, I mean, honestly, like if you think about one of SBF skill sets was how he was able to play all of the lobbyists and kind of trick Washington into, you know, being in his back pocket. Like he's clearly able to persuade people to do what he wants. I wonder if he will have that same kind of charm uh, on the inside. If you didn't have a kid 25 years or just, you know, you press a button and you're no longer here, Pete. <laughs> well, we we've done this hypothetical before of like how much, would you have to get paid to do like hard time? Um, yeah. If you're saying if I didn't have it, but like, again, the 25 years he's going to do, he's going to be in a white collar prison. He's probably, is he? I think so. Right. Like how is he not? The first prison he was in was not white collar. He got transferred for being bullied. And it <laughs> okay. sounds like he's in the prison with snitches and ex cops and pedophiles and stuff. Like, okay. They can't put him in gen pop. I don't know if that's true, but um, the first person he was in was not the white collar. Yeah, you're right. He said, uh, he, he's been residing in the Metropolitan Detention Center, MDC, since August 11th, 2023, because he violated his bail conditions. Among other things, he sent his co-conspirator and ex-girlfriend, Caroline Ellison. I mean, if you've seen the picture of her, you know how hard it would be to give her up. Um, he sent her memos. And at the time, Kaplan said Bankman Freed had engaged in witness tampering at least twice. So, okay, maybe he did blow his chance at a at a nicer prison through all of this. Yeah, you never know. This this they could they can move him eventually. The, I mean, and I, I mean again, like honestly, they probably should. It's pretty that guy is not meant for hardcore federal uh, um, uh, gen pop. No way. No. Um, did you have like people, I've been doing the, the book club stuff, uh, with my newsletter and people keep suggesting like going infinite, the Michael Lewis book about SBF, but it never seems like the suggestion is from people who have actually read it because all the reviews I've read were that it was massively disappointing, that it was this puff piece. He had all this incredible access, had the chance to do this really, um, interesting takedown being alongside of him as all of this unfolded. And he basically just copped out clearly got bought off to some extent. That's what I've heard. But have you heard anything about that book? No, it, it's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I read Moneyball and um, I don't think I read the uh, the Flash Trader one, but I've heard podcasts, a bunch of podcasts out about it. You know, eventually yeah. these guys, they all go, they all go corporate. Well, and that's the thing, because I remember when the SBF stuff broke, the initial reaction was, holy shit, Michael Lewis has been his shadow essentially for the past like couple years this is going to be incredible content and i think there's a reason that you don't hear much about the book that often because like this would i mean think about the marketing blitz all of the 
the ways you could capitalize on this story with a really well written book. And like, I continue to not hear very interesting reviews about it. That's lame. Did you see the, this is a side note, but the Anthony Weiner documentary when he was running for mayor, this like the second time after the scandal, for, uh, this is a while ago. So people might not remember. He was, he was a politician in New York who was like incredibly popular and then got yeah. busted on. He, he tweeted like one of his mistresses, a dick pic thinking it was a DM, but it went public and he quickly deleted it, but it was too late. They, yeah. they screenshotted it and he got busted and then tried to make a comeback and he got busted again mid filming the documentary. Yeah. So it's actually, but they did the opposite of it sounds like of Michael Lewis and actually, uh, you know, we're asking him questions and for some reason he just let the cameras roll through this, this train wreck. Yeah. Yeah. John says, I disagree with that characterization characterization of the book he could have went harder but it's still a good read i mean you can go look at the like the reviews on like a site like goodreads um and it's his worst re uh reviewed book by a lot it's his only one uh, uh with a review under four uh, has a 3.8 you know other books he's well over 4.25 you know averages for like the big short you know the stuff he was known for so again when you have probably one of the juiciest stories and access that no one else had and it's your worst reviewed book, that is fumbling. The, that's fumbling the story. You should have been able to make an absolute mega hit meal out of it. And, uh, and he did not. Yeah. You don't like, you don't see many podcasts. Uh, maybe he doesn't do the, the podcast uh, circuit, but you would think you would think there'd be more podcasts, now, but I haven't read it. So who knows? He did have, he was doing his own like podcast in tandem with writing the book because he had spun up, you know, once, you know, Malcolm Gladwell started doing his podcast, Michael Lewis was like, oh, I should, uh, I should do one of these as well. And I listened to a couple of the episodes, uh, but didn't get, didn't get hooked, but there you go. SBF 25 years, uh, enjoy your time. And, uh, you know, not a coincidence. I don't think crypto pumping, uh, you know, during, uh, the wake of all of this, because when that happened, there was a lot of doom and gloom for the crypto space. You know, he, he, if he could have just held off for, you know, what eight months or whatever it was to back to this boom he might have been able to uh, piece Survive together it. yeah he might he might have oh you're saying because he would have had like more liquidity on yeah. hand to make this all right right yeah yeah and 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 just people funneling funneling money like he could at least push the ponzi scheme to go another year or something with all the new the new uh people depositing it is interesting too to think of this stuff coming full circle because you know I had you know I had um one of the BlockFi uh, credit cards where you're getting like crypto interest and then I had some stuff in the Gemini Earn uh, interest program for crypto and those were some of the things that uh, were part of the collateral damage of the FTX dominoes and that whole kind of house of cards of the crypto lending sphere and I'm just now starting to get the like okay you can get your interest that you weren't able to retrieve because of the class action lawsuits and there that is finally getting settled and both of them they're paying out the total amount I didn't have a huge amount uh, in either of them but it is interesting that they were somehow through litigation or however to recover those funds. Hmm. Yeah. I got one from BlockFi. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I must've just had like, you know how they won't like let you cash out 0.0001s and stuff. Right. I, I must've, cause I think it was like 28 bucks or something, you know, but yeah. Cause I got out of there as fast as I could when the news first started going with them. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. I'm not, uh, what? I think that, Oh, go ahead. What was the final ruling for SBF was it he was maybe this John can say uh, about the book if the book said it was it he he was just a you know an idiot gambler on Adderall and they just were gambling too much with that secondary company or was it he was you know doing something more malicious and criminal yeah I mean it says the official in prison for seven counts of conspiracy and fraud charges stemming from the collapse, uh, the judge, yeah. But I don't know if that's answering your question. Uh, I guess kind of, I guess, yeah, they somehow, they and they can also, you know, weave these, these like um, laws into like, no, this fits under this. So we're going to, right. We're going to say it's conspiracy, but I mean, I don't, I, obviously the guy deserves, you know, 
quite a bit of punishment for ruining people's lives unless unless everyone got their money back right yeah i guess it it included 11 billion in uh forfeiture there uh was that i don't remember what the exact amount was that ended up getting i thought it was less than that but um yeah um anyways uh if you have any thoughts on the SBF sentence uh let us know in the comments how many yeah. years we'll uh, see SBF him should get. <laughs> we'll see him 20 some years from now yeah that that will be wild to see uh I, I have a feeling like you want to talk about like before and after pictures because he's already kind of a, a funny looking uh guy uh I mean, I can't, he doesn't seem like the type to just like emerge from prison with like a shaved head and just completely jacked, but that would be pretty funny. Uh, man, I, I would, he has to, what else yeah. are you going to do there? But like, I don't know. You're right. Like, I don't see it happening. How about another, uh, content idea for SBF while in there that he spins up, um, a, a podcast where he explains to other inmates what effective altruism is uh oh. and see how that goes <laughs> yeah well these criminals will be like oh my god this is genius i can use this why did i think of that yeah and then everyone will yeah. think i'm a good guy um you know john hinckley no the, the man who murdered uh john lennon just got out oh. not too long ago um so he got that was 1980 so he got 40 40 40 years or so and um He's 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 touring and doing. I saw this on Twitter. He has a Twitter account, um, but I, I couldn't bring myself to follow him. But I, I like because he keeps getting canceled because he gets he gets these gigs and then they find out he's the guy who killed John Lennon and then they cancel his gig. <laughs> I mean, that's like yeah, we uh, we called some of your references, uh, but just didn't call enough to to find out about that on your <laughs> resume. Uh, all right. Uh, what did you hear about? Uh, I'm sure you heard about the the Jonte Murray uh, prop betting scandal. Um, John Porter, Jonte Porter. Yeah, who? or sorry, Jonte Porter. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. mixing up. Uh, isn't there a basketball player named like Jonte Murray? Yeah, there's De uh, De yeah Deonte Murray on the Hawks and, too. And then this is Michael Porter, Porter's brother, who plays for the Denver? Nuggets. This is his. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this uh, is his younger brother. I'll pull this up here. This was the big news um, this week. And this one's interesting because it involves um, some specific prop betting lines here uh, involving Porter from games on January 26th and March 20th. So very recently, um, the league is currently looking into it. But in this game on January 26th against the Clippers, there was increased betting interest on the under for Porter props, which for the night were set at five and a half points, four and a half rebounds, and one and a half assists. There was also an over under for Porter's made three pointers, which was 0.5. That evening, Porter played just four minutes before leaving the game because of what the Raptors said was an aggravation of an eye injury. He had suffered four days earlier against the Grizzlies. He didn't score against the Clippers, but registered three rebounds and one assist. Uh, so all of these unders hit. The next day, as part of a daily report to users on betting results, DraftKings Sportsbook stated that the under on Porter's three-pointers was the biggest money winner for betters of any NBA player props from games that evening. Uh, so this is, this is a fascinating thing here as far as it, it actually is legalized gambling that was able to flag something like this. I can't believe he's betting prop. <laughs> God, which money can he be getting down? That is the question. I was trying to think like, does, does someone who bets props on, on DraftKings? I mean, it, it can't be more than like a thousand dollars a prop. Can it? Is anyone getting more than that on a prop? I mean, you can, yeah, you can. If, but like, I, that's after you've had like a big, huge, um, like history with DraftKings and you're not winning. Yeah. Well, even then, what do you think the limit would be? Like, if you just have the the best account, you just you read as the biggest fish ever. Like, how much are they letting you bet on under point five Porter three pointers? Yeah, if you're if you're, I think if you're, it depends on the site. So like points bet and bet rivers. They limit you like the amount like right away. Even even if you're not like a winning player, they their their limits are pretty small. Bodog's pretty small. DraftKings can like it depends on the account. I know some guys who've gotten like hundred thousand dollars down. Okay. Um, yeah. So that does happen on like crazy side props and so. Well, one was a Super Bowl, um, but like 
it, you can get you some of some people can get a lot down. So yeah. it does exist. Another thing is if he contacted a or was contacted by a syndicate. Right. Because that that makes more sense, right? Because they're saying, hey, we are going to be able to capitalize on this across a ton of different fronts here. But even then you think about like, what is the payment he needs to get to make worth that, right? Because we always talk about that where these guys are are literally making millions of dollars. Like how much would you need to get paid to jeopardize this? Or was he such an idiot that he thought, hey, this will just look so harmless. I've been dealing with this uh, aggravation anyways. Me kind of coming out saying it's bothering me won't ever scan as 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 crazy. I <sighs> Well, he's he's he is innocent until proven guilty, still, right? I think so. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's just a coincidence. But um, uh, he's how old is he? Nineteen, twenty. Yeah. Let me see here. Just dumb, just a dumb young kid doing dumb stuff. Jonte Porter, twenty-four years old. So oh, okay. Not well, it's completely yeah. Okay. It's his All first right. season, but he was uh, an older prospect. It looks like. Yeah, he might maybe play in the the G League or whatever they call it now. Yeah. Um, hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. You'd figure you, that he would have to make like ten million to make it. Yeah, because even if he's a journeyman for four years here, he's probably going to make something close to that. You'd figure. Right. Yeah. Plus I the mean, status that goes with being an NBA player and all the benefits that it comes with. Yeah. It's just, it's like, there's, there's a huge difference too of him even like tipping someone off. Like say, say it was something like, you know, uh, he knew that his coach was shifting up the rotation and like he tipped off this syndicate, like, Hey, they're, they're benching me now. Uh, I'm not going to be playing in this rotation. My minutes are probably going to get slashed. Like there's a huge difference in my mind, even from that to just like, you know, you're, you're sharing insider information that you shouldn't be sharing versus you are actually controlling coming out of the game. Like you are the one waving your hands being like, I need to come out of this game right now. I would still be playing otherwise if it wasn't for this ruse. Yes. Yeah. But you like the way you described it also makes me think it could be just someone in the locker room. You know, like, oh, I heard they're benching Porter. Let me contact the syndicate. But then to to have the same thing play out on two different instances <laughs> makes it seem far more likely that this was more coordinated. Why would he go? This this seems like an IQ test more than anything. They're, they're, like they all someone someone in chat uh, John John somebody we know John 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 saying it. It was a huge single game parlay with all unders. So like it, just, you're just making it so obvious, you know? Yeah. It does say here, a sports book industry source told ESPN that multiple betting accounts attempted to bet large amounts upward of 10 and 20 K on Porter unders in the January game. So it had to have been SGPs to kind of juice that up to being worth it. Um, okay. Betting limits on NBA player pops. I guess we should have just read before we were guessing <laughs> are typically around one to two K yeah. people were trying to do whatever they could to bet uh, Porter props. And then you, I wonder too, like, do you get any of the steam betters coming into that have no idea this is going on, but they're like, Oh, I'm going to get out in front of this movement. I noticed it on a few of they, my screeners. Yeah. They, Oh, I'm sure there's guys steaming up like the other sites that didn't move fast enough. Yeah. I'm sure that, that, they're benefiting from that. I'm pretty sure I played him during this stretch too. Yeah. Um, so, which means I'm entitled to full refunds for every loss I've ever had <laughs> on DraftKings, <laughs> both DFS and sports betting. Yeah. I mean, in this, this stuff is like, we, we joke about the people, um, you know, like idiot sports betters who are constantly in the mentions of these sites being like void the bet. They got hurt or whatever. This is rigged. Like, Clearly, you know, DraftKings knew, uh, you know, that's why they hung this line that I got beat on or whatever. I mean, this is brutal for the integrity of the games as it pertains to how idiots like view the league. You know what I mean? Like conspiracy theorists, like this is the exact fodder that they need to think everything is rigged. I think there's enough scandals this past year for the conspiracy 
theorists to just forever the rest of their life. Yes. You're never unconvincing them. You're never. There's no amount of evidence that will not convince them that NBA is rigged. Yeah. Um, it is pretty. It is pretty wild. At least just, Pete Rose had the decency to bet on his team, <laughs> not the unders. Right. Yeah, because then that does exactly. At least you're like your incentives are aligned, right? Yeah. Everyone's incentives are aligned. Where his incentives are assuming his coach is playing him to help him win the game and you are pulling yourself out to win a bet that is saying that you are making your team worse in that instance. Yeah. That's a pretty bad implication. And you know, this article saying he's a two, he, he has a two way contract at 400 K or whatever. He's an older prospect. Yeah. Okay. I could now, now that it's starting to, to add up a little bit more because in 10 million, he's probably not making, he's probably not making 10 million. Yeah. It still is like, okay, let, let's just do some, like, let's say they were, they were doing the SGPs around 10 to 20 K. What do you think they were getting on that? Maybe on a few different unders where they getting up to like a six X, a seven X. Yeah. It depends on how, how hard they smashed it, which they probably hit it pretty, pretty hard. Let's I would love to see him passing up rebounds. Like, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to get a ballpark of what number, assuming he was in on this, what number it would take. Like, you know, say they got like a 7X on a 20K, so that's 140. Say they hit it like three times uh, or something like that. Say they got close to like 400K. Like, is he getting is he getting 200K of this kind of thing? Like, hey, we'll give you half. Good question. Yeah. I mean, he should at least. <laughs> yeah, I'd be asking for 90% of it. Maybe, I mean, maybe there's also always the chance that he's in some sort of like, you know, gang related trouble or, you know, whatever. He owes some debts for who knows, you know, side gambling or investments that didn't pay. Who knows? And and then he's just doing this to pay it because he has to. Yep. Um, Allegedly. It, it is. It, it is interesting that. He also is like his brother is, you know, it's not like Michael Porter Jr. is one of the top, you know, 50 players in the league or top 25 or whatever, but like he is a key role player on a championship contending team. Like your family's doing well in the world of basketball, like even from just separating the money from like a, I don't want to tarnish like Michael's name in this league. Like Michael Porter Jr. is not good enough to not be known as this guy's brother like going forward if this all comes out to be true good point definitely yeah you're jeopardizing your brother making 100 150 million dollars it's it's crazy uh let's see i just got a tweet here from our guy uh john kelly he sent me one of the uh betting slips here that got flagged six picks at plus 1300 Eighty thousand to pay one point one million. Okay, we were way off. We were way out. I didn't even know that there were that many. So you have, oh, it looks like there was there was live betting under assists, under points, under three pointers. Um, that's nuts. Now it starts to make a little bit more sense if we're clearing a million a couple times. Yes, definitely. I'm I'm just looking. Mark Jackson's commenting on it. I don't think this is actually Mark Jackson. No, is it? okay. No, it's his, his birder account. Uh, I, I I love like it's such a weird thing to make an entire Twitter personality. I guess his the handle is called Casual Taking uh, or Take King, but you, then you have to put in the bio not affiliated with Mark Jackson who <laughs> gets tagged. Right, right. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, that's just one slip. But this was this was canceled, right? But I mean, he doesn't know that. I mean, right? Yeah. Like, he. Okay, so now we're, we're now we're talking. They're trying. They're trying to go for like four or five million. How are you able to get eighty k down on his SGP? This goes back to the whole thing about the just the hypocrisy of letting you know fish like accounts punt off absurd amounts of money while it like if if Haralabob went in to try to bet this SGP, it's a it's a five dollar limit. Right. Oh, right. Right. Yes. Yeah. This, this also means that Harala Bob's not behind this. Uh, you know, not that he, not that he would be, but like, cause it's not a syndicate bet, right? They would, 
have multiple smaller accounts, they'd be trying not to get caught. You know, they'd be playing it smart. That that's a good point, right? Because if if a syndicate was trying to capitalize on because let's just say you clearly have some insane access with Porter, right? Like if you're able to coordinate something like this, that's a cash cow if you do it in a very smart and subtle way. And this was not done in a smart and subtle way. So whoever was doing this was probably pretty amateur novice betters, like not understanding that, yeah, DraftKings is going to flag an absurdly high amount on one specific random prop. That's also not, like, it's not LeBron James, right? <laughs> like, this isn't a popular player that everyone's rushing to bet on. This was going to stick out like a sore thumb. These guys do not strike me as that smart. No, no. They they know nothing of, you know, market size on, on these, on the, uh, you know, on sports bets, right? Like, yeah. I mean, they could have got away with, you know, uh, money lines and sides and totals. They could have, but like he's not, he doesn't get enough minutes. And they would have to bet a lot more. Um, I mean, I get, I, you get, their logic is good from someone who knows nothing about sports betting. Yeah. And they're like, no, yeah, you could just bet any market. And like, wait, they can bet on you specifically. You could fake an injury. And then we hit all the unders. And we just have to do this like four times and you're good. And, exactly. And then uh, and then you make as much as your brother. You're like, how there do you we go. get you to the one hundred and seventy million dollar <laughs> contract? We just do this uh, one hundred and seventy times and uh, it will be good. <laughs> Jesus. Jeez. Yeah, um, it's too bad. I'm sure his brother would have thrown him a bone, too. I mean, well, who knows? But that that's the other thing that it all goes to of like, is this just a general hustler mentality like? Hey, let's make some money. Or is he actually down bad with his finances? Does he have other outstanding? Because isn't this what happened with our League of Legends stuff, right? Where the those guys had existing gambling debts, and then to pay them off, they threw games. Like the equivalent of when you go into a restaurant and you can't pay your bill, and they're like, "Well, come wash dishes in the back <laughs> until you until you pay it off." Like it does beg the question. You're probably assuming he has some kind of experience with gambling pete wait 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 have you considered that this man has some demons this is this is the point we have to get to J jante call us up we are ready to run pr yeah for this consulting work here the demons and this one you can actually bring a lot of color you could say like the demons came into your eyes yeah. and aggravated it and uh and made you leave his brother signed that 170 million dollar contract and the demons were getting to him. Um, he's but listen, he feels really bad about it, and he's gonna go to uh, Gamblers Anonymous. Um, and these sites really need to do more. Really, it's really the sites and the legislators for not, you know, protecting uh, Jante from his, his demons. Man, uh, it, it, and then how do you how do you think this plays out then, right? Too because similar to the Otani stuff, it all has to go. Like I assume DraftKings, you know, if you're betting on DraftKings, you have, you know, your legal, you know, information uploaded and tied with the site. Like they know who made these bets. Do they throw Porter under the bus for this, or do they serve as the interpreter in this story? And Porter actually gets off skate because if these guys don't implicate him in this, and it is just this super random occurrence, like he can get by. But if they start to show text messages or conversations to save their own ass, then you're really in trouble. Do, the way they bet, do you think these guys have the sophistication <laughs> to hide this crime from any competent, you know, DAs? I seriously doubt it. They'll and what'll probably happen is they'll even fuck that up. And then they'll catch them deleting tax and stuff, which will increase their prison time. Uh, would be would be my guess. Um, so yeah, um, you, um, what did you just say? You just said, "Oh, the the Otani thing." Did you see that 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 tweet that somebody made um, uh, where um, it's Otani giving the press conference? Yes, and he's it, like, he's like, I really like. I really like yeah. Alabama, 
at minus four and a half because, and then the interpreter is just like he says he's never bet on a game. I don't. Let me. Can't, no, I can't I, do it justice. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can pull it up. I I saw it in a. That, in a I thought that one was. Oh, I good. found it. Here we go. One okay. Second. Perfect. Yeah, because I had saw this too, and it was. Uh, <laughs> it was very good. It's just because you brought him brought him into this that. Um, I think definitely Otani's got a whip. Yeah, here. Hey, God, what's that? Eh, so you're matter. Eh, first, first, me, eh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. 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 Baseball, any other sports, <laughs> or never have asked somebody to do it on my behalf, uh, and I have never uh, went through a bookmaker uh, to bet on sports. Oh man, that was good. <laughs> uh, love that. Uh, yeah, here. So, what the link? Here you go uh, for people who want to uh, to see that edit. And that, I mean, that's a that's a meme template that's going to keep on giving for a long time. There. Oh yeah, that's that's good. That's good. I still think I still think he's probably going to be okay. He's yeah. got the fall guy. Uh, unless that fall guy, they start you know Sam Bankman freeding him, and he's looking at fifty to seventy years or something, and then he might turn on old on old Otani. That is the interesting thing, right? Of like how how much heat do you apply to where? whatever amount of money is actually waiting for the interpreter at the end to make this all go away. At what point in your hypothetical, like the 25 years thing, at what point do you say, no, this isn't worth it? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and you know, this is how, this is their MO is, is they want the big fish, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they will, you know, you know put the screws to them to, to get the big fish. The problem is sometimes the fish is so big that they don't, they don't pull that that lever. I I mean, here's I hope I hope definitely he doesn't go down because I don't want these stories getting any bigger than they already are, even though we're covering it. But like, because then I mean the wins. I mean it's so obvious, you know, if you read our our world corner of the internet's Twitter, that the gambling addiction thing and rigging is just leading up to some heavy legislation. Oh, yeah. which I said was going to happen two years ago. And, um, and eventually I, maybe I'm wrong, but, but because, you know, betters players and DFS players, they have no association. They have no lobbying group anywhere. So it's, it's all heavily one-sided. And once the press gets on board, well, it's over, you know what I mean? Cause you have all the lobbying groups on one side and then there'll be heavy regulation. It'll all be moted off and it's bad for con. I mean, this is why I, I say this, like for, not Bob because he's, he's, you know, he doesn't care, but like, you know, unabated and, and stochastic and even you Pete and, and just people who make their living doing content, you know, run peer, et cetera. Um, once if they, if they mowed off competition and then, and the rate goes up, like your players are never going to win. You know what I mean? doesn't matter how good your, your content is. People are just, it's just going to be a lottery to, you know, it'll eventually be just like more like the lottery or uh, a scratch off ticket, you know, because it's just the rake will be so high and there'll never be any innovation or content because it'll just be, you know, like an arm of, um, I don't know, the stock market slash the government, you know, and just be yeah. like, these four companies will be here forever and they'll just do whatever they want. The other thing that's really interesting to juxtapose the Otani and Jonte Porter, I mean, this is the classic double standard of what do you mean for the franchise and for the sport you know john Tay porter like he's not getting any superstar treatment he he falls clearly in the category of let's make an example out of this individual otani does not fall in the category of let's make an example of baseball's and international's biggest star <laughs> right right like the the sport is highly incentivized to make this look as innocent and harmless as possible like the smoking gun would have to be so insane for him to come down because everyone is going to try to build right. up a defense for him. And you could, you could, you could say like, this is also in the news right now, P Diddy, but like even, even bigger, you know, big stars like Bill Cosby, you know, like guys who've actually gone down, you could say, no, they will go after him. It's like, yeah, but like P Diddy and Bill Cosby was like, that's like 
20, 30 years later, they finally go, you know, will go after him. Like when they're in their heyday, they didn't, they didn't go after him. And I think Otani's like, he, he, you know, he brings enough, he brings enough money for everybody to, to eat. So <laughs> they do not want him going down, especially with yeah. baseball, man. They're struggling, you know, they're struggling as it is. I was just going to say, yeah, if like it is like to have, you know, Otani's arguably the best thing to happen to baseball from like an awareness standpoint, getting young kids excited about it. Like what better, you know, story to come saddle up with your pops and watch baseball than a, a two way player who plays elite at both sides. And then he just so happens to be like, I'm sure there's some dad out there who said, how am I going to explain this to my eight year old boy? <laughs> you don't have to like they don't you know i mean come on no, but then you would get a tweet out of it <laughs> did you see did you see the, the the other tweet with otani playing the little base throwing the baseball in the in the no. dugout They're like otani doesn't have a gambling problem and it's clearly like him and another another angels player uh i don't think he was on the dodgers yet like playing some little gambling game in in the dugout where they flip the baseball, try to get it to land on this thing, and he gets it to land, and he's just like freaking out. It's like, oh, you didn't have like twenty grand grand going on that, did you? Man, yeah, it'll be because it like you think back to the Jordan stuff, right? In that same light, like you watch, there was, I mean, the dude, you you see him out on the golf course, right? Like wanting to bet a ton, playing that game, the little gambling game uh, inside the arena. Like it was clear. This guy loved to gamble. I mean, the thing with Otani, right. Previous to this, we didn't have any evidence of him being an action junkie in that way. Right. We don't have stories of him on the golf course with Charles Barkley playing like $2,000 skin game or whatever. Like that wasn't happening to our knowledge. And, but, and by the way, really the only thing with him would be if he bet on baseball, because everything else, like who cares? Like, okay. He bet on uh, with bookmakers, like you're supposed to use DraftKings now. And I guess, and can you in California? I think you can bet DraftKings in California. But either way, it's like, whatever. He bet with a bookmaker. Give him a $5,000 fine or whatever and fucking move on. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. who cares if he bet on the fucking bills? <laughs> right. Gives a shit. Exactly. Um, but, like, with so much of this stuff, right, it is the cover-up um, where you say, as opposed to, Obviously, he can't come out and say, hey, we were just betting on the bills. No big deal. But still, it is going to say, like, I had nothing to do with any of this. I mean, like, he is separating himself completely to where once you, like, outright lie to people, if that comes out to be the case, that's when your public reputation takes a hit. Okay, bigger psycho. His interp- Let's just say the story's true. Bigger psycho, psycho, his interpreter or parlay picker? Um, I think his interpreter... Because Parlay Picker was just like, I found this infinite money glitch and like, I'm just going to have fun and I'm young, who cares? But your interpreter, like, again, going back to what Otani means to his country, to baseball, to all of this, and know that you're going to jeopardize this, um, you have to be a psychopath. Uh, And also it's like, if it was, if it was Otani and you knew that stuff, it's like, just kind of blackmail your boss to a nice raise and be like, Hey. I want a I want a full million a year salary now, and I'll I'll stay hush about you know you betting on these uh you know Indian cricket matches. So I don't know, yeah. man. This this seems wild. I, I I'm I agree with you. It was it's because it's more personal. Yes, it's your, you imagine they're kind of boys, right? They gotta be, because Otani's not gonna keep you around if he doesn't like you. He can get mm. another interpreter. So I'm, I'm imagining. Uh, again, we're assuming that his story is true. It probably was. It's a good chance it was o- Otani himself, and his boy is actually covering from him. And he's a really good guy, but like a um, uh, um, a mensch or whatever. But if if it is true, like that is super personal. You know what the movie Office Space or whatever, right? That's kind of what Parlay Picker did, but just at like a dumb level where he was eventually going to get caught and was blowing yeah. money on not just gambling, but houses and cars and stuff like that. So, like, I mean, you know, when you're watching the movie Office Space, do you go, oh, those guys are horrible? No, you go, like, fuck that company. You know what I mean? They're just taking a few pennies here or there. And he's only jeopardizing. It's not like the Jags are going bankrupt, you right. know, because it's of It's not him. personal at all. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it, I, do you know what is interesting to me? I remember when we were talking about this last week and the story had kind of just broke. And we were like, we will probably know a lot more. Uh, a week from now, 
flash forward a week from now, we don't know that much more. Like this has gone into a pretty well, kind of dark holding pattern. Yeah. He's a he's a breadwinner. He's everyone eating with him. You can't you gotta you gotta swipe this under the rug and and it, what'll what'll be interesting is if they really swipe it under the rug and then his interpreter gets like slapped by on a wrist, go back to Japan or Korea. I think he might be actually from Korea, but whatever. Go back to to Asia and you know, pay your here's your fine, which Otani will probably play it, pay underneath, you know, give it to him over time. Yeah, man. It, it, it again what what incredible timing right i mean otani's playing today on opening day right yeah 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 it's crazy yeah i bet they don't mention it uh, that now that's a good bet there yeah the on the broadcasts yeah yep. otani you know him embrittled in his own gambling scandal coming up to the plate yeah we're two hours away from uh, the dfs opening day yeah what's uh I listened to you on uh, what was Neil's podcast the other day. I think you you mentioned that you'll be playing MLB baseball this year for uh, yeah. for DFS. Yeah, yeah, I'm playing. I'm I'm going to give it another season. That was like my best my best sport. By the way, shout out Neil has uh has a uh, was wearing a Lulz hat yesterday in his uh, most recent interview. Oh, was he? Yeah. There you go. Looking good. There you go. I know he's got the pint glass too. He's one of our best influencers we got around here. We need to get a uh, nerdy tenor back on the podcast circuit with his uh, right. with his mug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nerdy's got nerdy's got to ruin DFS all over again, but this time, you know, repping. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah. We, we we should have we should have a. Uh... We could we should circle back to some of those guests. I feel yeah. like it's been a while since we've talked to nerdy to Osimo. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was thinking that too. Uh, we haven't had Levantan on in a while either. Um, yeah, yeah, we should probably start reaching out. The uh, yeah, Osmo's a dad now. Whoa! Congrats. Did you know that? I didn't see that. Yeah, I think uh, I think I knew that that was coming, but then uh, on Instagram, I've seen some of the photos. Congrats! Yeah, man. Um, I didn't know um, androids can reproduce, but the technology apparently from his home world is vastly superior to ours. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, what a, any for as far as DFS, have you are you running out the same process? Have you overhauled anything, any new approaches? Um, mine is not working currently. I have to make a few tweaks, so I'm going to use uh Saberson today. I'm basically retired, so it's yeah. a lot harder uh, to figure it out myself. So he would have fixed it for me by now. The problem with the problem with DF, DFS and fixing your own stuff and not using uh, one of these sites, but the, first of all, they weren't around like you said before. Right. But was um, you like kind of you need all the data that day. You can you like you need the contest size and all the contest information, but the contest isn't out last month. You know what I mean? Like they the, the you know they only post the stuff so you know so many days or hours before the actual lock. So you kind of really only have like twenty four to twelve hours to to get out ready for opening day. And like um, like you know if you use like sometimes like Steamer or Fangraph stuffs so like not even updated. They don't have like the splits ready and. You know, like you can't, you just can't, you can't do it. So, like, it, it might, sometimes it'll take three, four, five days to to get all that to get all that info, or even if you use like Cardi's info, like, you know, you gotta like wait till he puts it out. Yeah. How much like additional, like how much longer will it take you to do your process via SaberSim versus if you had your system all up and humming? It's my process is probably a little longer. Oh, okay. But baseball, so. It's a great DFS sport. Like before we came on, all the lineups are already announced. So like you could be done right now. Right. Yeah. Like if I didn't have the show, I'd be I'd be doing if it. I didn't have this godforsaken show. I'd, I'd have my feet kicked up. That actually <laughs> reminds me. How did your uh how did your booze in with buddies for March Madness go? Oh, it was good. We I think we I think we probably won like six seventy percent of our bets. The uh the catchphrase was just you just gotta put in the work, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you just do the do the work and you win the bets, Pete. Which of course the work was just like looking at their pictures and you know, we look at their cheerleaders, you know, and like mm, oh I putting the work in, Oregon looks really good. 
were you were you betting just spreads uh, or what what kind of stuff were what kind of lines no, were you no both yeah, yeah some some player props which it looks like might be the last year um, yeah if the news was report that were right what was this a zero hedge out report you sent me yeah, this but one. It, it's it's from a quote from like the ncaa president that they want to get rid this, of was this was uh, this tied to the the porter stuff i think it's a good question i don't know I don't know, but um, I mean, <laughs> with the Porter, with the Porter example, he's got he now has a leg to stand on. That's for sure, because a lot of these college athletes, you can, but if you can get one point one million on just one game, shit. Yeah. I mean, I mean that shit's got to be happening already. Yeah, got to be. Yeah, it's a bar. I mean, because I know this was kind of the first year too. Like, there's starting to be like more and more, you know, fantasy games like surrounding the tournament. And it is such like I do every year. I do um uh, a fantasy draft for the tournament, and it's just very simple. It's just you draft players and you get their points. And so it's kind of like doing a NFL playoff contest where you're kind of trying to triangulate who's going to score points, but which teams are going to go far because five games from you know, a bench player is going to be better than one game from a, a stud most likely. Um, but like, there's all these kind of, I think permutations of bracket type games, fantasy drafts, um, even like survivor eliminator type stuff. But it's like the NCA, they, it, it's all going to get lumped into it, right? Where this entire, the entire apparatus is going to come down in one fell swoop. Like it's going to make it harder to convince them. No, let us do these like bracket style pools. Um, and that's fine. If you get rid of prop betting, I mean, it shouldn't be, but you see what I'm saying? Like they're just going to lump everything into, into one pot. I can totally, I can totally see that. And you know what they'll do too? the same, the same bullshit about college. College is about, uh, academia. Remember like for the reason that not let players get sponsorships yep. and stuff, it's going to ruin it's about academia and like anyone who knows or had athletes in their class in college. I don't know if you ever had like, you know, like a athlete in your, one of your classes Pete, yeah. in their heads down fucking sleeping the whole fucking time, you know? Yeah. Um, but he still somehow passes. Um, like, give me a break. Everyone fucking knows that for a lot of these people, it's, it's just, it's just fucking, if, you know, to, to get to the pros or make some money or whatever. And by the way, who gives a shit? I don't, I don't even think any of it should be illegal. Like what material effect does uh, uh, Porter have on the world by not like by faking playing or whatever, right? Like it doesn't affect anybody's anything. Like it, it affects us gamblers, but like, whatever, fuck us. You know what I mean? Like who cares? And it affects the, the, the Raptors, but who cares? It's just a stupid NBA game. Like, yeah. Why would any there be any criminal anything for these? Like, it's just a fucking sport. Right. It's but they do like the NCA is the perfect example with all that stuff. Right. They have to it. they try to make it bigger than the specific thing. They say it's about the integrity, the morality, what NCA sp sports stand for altogether. That's fine. Like, fine. Have your integrity. But like, it, but it has no effect on society, like a negative effect on society. Like, there's no there's no crimp. There's no like victim. Like, you know, there's no, there's no, say, like, no one's out blowing a dude uh, to <laughs> right. to get a, a a Jared McCain under prop or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, the gambling, the gambling uh, addiction is a separate separate issue on this point, where mm. like, but like, I mean, who's the victim here? Like the the, mm. the Raptors? So what? Like, fuck them. They're they're playing a sport. Like, what is it? So what? It's just a game. Who cares? Yeah. I, I seriously, I don't, I don't, well, I don't get how they did that in the beginning. Like the Pete Rose got in trouble. Like who cares? It, but you know, what's actually so different now is they can't really play. The leagues can't play this morality angle, right? The, the NBA is getting their pockets stuffed with money from gambling, from DFS. Like it has to be one of their biggest revenue generators. Now their biggest partnerships. There's a reason that tweets going around where they're going to offer in-game betting via the NBA league pass app, right? Like this is an absolute cash cow for them. They can't like tisk tisk this away. They need to now do the mental gymnastics to spin this to people of 
it is an isolated instance. This isn't a bad thing because they need that money. They, they, they're going to, they, they got to walk the line though, because they want the regulation P you know, this is my general thesis is all, all legislation basically eventually gets massaged in favor of the lobbying people in favor of the businesses by lobbyists, like almost yeah. all of it, even like the most well-intentioned, like the American with disabilities act and stuff, things like that. I won't get into it, but like they eventually massage it to, for their own, for their own gain. So like they have to go like, Oh no, we don't want heavy regulation and burden to entry from our competitors. You know, like it's like they, they but you know, they will be in, They'll be in like it's behind closed doors, but I don't even mean to say that like in a nefarious way. That's just business as usual. Like you call as a you know, if you're working on a piece of legislation, you call the stakeholders is what they call it and talk to them about what they'd like and dislike on the bill. And if they're going to oppose you in committee and stuff like that. And um, and then you change the language based on what they want. Otherwise, the bill's going to get killed because they'll go to committee and oppose it or. It won't even make it to committee because they'll usually just call the leadership and then they'll pull it and send it back to rules. So like, like, I, I don't know. The, anyways, my point is that they, what they kind of, I think they're going to play it like, well, please don't regulate us. But really they kind of, they, they really do actually want regulation. Yeah. I mean, I, if I were, were them, I would be trumpeting their partnership with DraftKings as what flagged this, that they, you know, I would be saying, Hey, if this was done with an illegal bookie, um, we would have had no way of this getting reported like an illegal book. You can't report this, <laughs> you, you know? So this is actually one of the pro reasons why this needs to be upfront and transparent because then they can share this data with us. That actually helps us maintain the integrity of our games. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I understand. I, listen, I understand why the NBA and DraftKings both, you know, hate, this type of thing, you know, cause you know, DraftKings can get swindled out of $1.1 million on a, on a, on a, on a donkey, you know, betting 30 grand on a huge single game parlay, but, and, and the integrity looks really bad for the NBA. So I, I understand why they'd want something to be done. I just don't see why it's like, you know, like what is the, the public's interest for the state to come in and spend money cracking down and legal time and laws. And then yeah. you have to have some regulatory apparatus that you have to pay for to look into this because of this stupid game and some gambling stuff. Like, I don't know. I, I, I mean, obviously they are going to do something. Uh, legislators like getting involved in this type of stuff too, because it like it's popular. So that gets their name in the press, which is helpful to them. And also, they they are you know jersey wearers to the tenth degree. These fucking legislators, like they yeah. love athletes and sports, and they all have season tickets and stuff like that. So they love, you know, um, you know, hobnobbing with Jerry Reinsdorf and stuff like that if they can. So um, that that's part of it, and then they also get to do the whole, you know, we're here for the greater moral good. You know, like gambling's bad, and we're the ones here that are gonna uh, uh, put a put a stop to these these shenanigans. So it's a, it's a real it's a real good trump card. Uh, like it's just good all around for for the both of these entities. You know, and and it's just like a bull, bullshit cat and mouse game that like that the public is not aware of, and they think like, no, no, they're, they're these two entities are you know totally opposed on this issue and. You're, yeah. you're one step away from floating that Jonte Porter is actually a plant by DraftKings in the <laughs> league so that they can use this story to their advantage. You want that two-way contract to continue? <laughs> you My drop, goodness. you drop in the fourth quarter. Look at this. I, I like we got to get your mobster character on this show more. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right, Brian. Anything else going up uh on brick75.com? Hopefully soon. Best ball hub updates. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully today, um, we got look, we got it looking good. Um, the auto drafter was like still set to the playoff mode, so that, like that's the only thing we got to change and make sure that doesn't happen. Then it's ready. There you go. Yeah, looking forward to that. I mean, you know, it, um, in a month, I think because it'll be like four weeks from now. It last year it was the Saturday night of that NFL draft weekend that Best Ball Mania was dropped. So 
Um, we have about uh, a little over four more weeks until all these big contests start to drop. So it'll be fun to have that tool at our disposal uh, when we start competing for X amount of dollars up top in Best Ball Mania. That should be a product, you know, free of players diving and stuff like that. It's going to be pretty tough. What if like Aaron Rodgers took a dive for, you know, some, for, uh, for, for, for Pat. <laughs> <laughs> take a dive. I mean, well, Hamlin could have taken a dive, I guess. Yeah, he was about to take a dive for RFK. Wouldn't put it, wouldn't put anything past him. Um, all right. Uh, anything else from you, Brian? We'll get this audio up on the podcast feed. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. I appreciate yeah. you guys hanging out in the chat. You can join us. We got the discords, Brian's discord. We got the deposit kingdom discord. There is a Lulz channel. It's one of our best uh, sources for show fodder. Uh, so if you see links, uh, things that would be good to discuss on the show, or you have guests you'd like to see have us on, drop it in there so we can mine it for show content. And uh, yeah, we will see you guys next time for what I assume will be another breakdown of some, you know, sports betting scandal because they happen every single week until then. This has been Lulz with Pete and Brick.